This is Diego with the Samsung Developer Program. We're starting the Tyson Tidbit series, where we're going to share a lot of concepts around Tyson and tips for your development. I'm going to start with how to use the project templates in Tyson Studio. First, let's create a new project in Tyson Studio. To do that, we go to File, New, Tyson Project. You may be able to pick between templates and samples. For today's video, we're going to focus on the templates. After that, you can click Next. Depending on the different packages that you have downloaded, you may see different versions for the different devices that you can develop for. For today, I'm just going to go for wearable 4.0. Here you can create native applications or web applications. Depending on your developer background, you can pick one or the other. As you can see, for native applications, you can use C and C++, and for web applications, you use standard uh, languages like JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS. For today's video, I'm going to focus on web applications. Then, I press Next. These are the different templates that you can use to start your application. You can start with the basic UI template. That only gives you a hello world kind of uh, sample and you can start modifying it and it's really useful when you start learning about Tyson and the different projects that you can create for your wearable device. You also can pick one of the two uh, Tyson Advanced UI uh, templates that you can see here, Basic and List. The Tyson Adv Advanced UI it's a web UI library that enables you to create and manage various kinds of UI components. So you have several commonly used components in, in projects and you don't have to program for them. They already come with the library and you can start modifying them from the get-go. You also have the widget template. A widget acts as a display of relevant information and actions that are shortcuts to an actual application. For example, you could display a small icon in the home page showing the date in your calendar. And then when the user taps on that icon, it can go to the actual calendar application. For this video, I'm going to concentrate on the Tyson Advanced UI list template that we have over here. And then we just have to press next. After that, we have to give the project a name going to call it Tyson Advanced UI video. That would be a good name. Uh, video list. It seems that I already created that project at some point. And after that, Tyson Studio is going to create all the files uh, for your project. On the Project Explorer tab, you're going to see the different files for the project that it was just created. You can see the config XML, that is the first one that is open here on the screen. I'm going to check in a second. But also you see the index HTML and in the JS folder, you're going to see the logic of your project that includes the app.js and a couple of libraries that we may check a little bit later. But first, let's check the config file that we have over here. This file has different tabs that show you uh, different information, general information about your application, and you can modify this. The wizard allows you to change them here without having to change the XML directly. But if you're an experienced developer, perhaps you can do it on your own. Just be mindful that these changes could affect your application, and if you have an error, this is something that could uh, come back later when you're compiling. In the overview, obviously, you have general information like the name of your application, the initial page that you're going to use for, for it, and something like the icon that you're going to use for your application. If you're going to submit this to the Galaxy Store, it's recommended to change this, this icon. It should have a clearly identifiable icon, and it's a good practice to have something that uh, users can easily check and know what they are tapping on. Additionally, you should uh, include information like the author and email and the website that give support to this application. But these are aspects that are incredibly relevant when you publish your application. In features, 
you can add specific features that are needed for your application. For example, if you're going to use uh, some location-based uh, program, and you're going to use the GPS or you're going to use the microphone or any other feature that come directly from the device, you have to ask for permission in this uh, tab. So just for the fun of it, I'm going to say that I'm going to be using Bluetooth. The same thing goes here with privileges. There are several sensors in your device that would need the user's permission to be able to uh, collect the information that you may need. That's quite uh, especially true for health-related information. So, for example, here, I'm going to look for heart health info. You have to add it, but uh, just be mindful, depending on the kind of application that you're going to create, that you may have to add different privileges. Localization is just if you're going to add a translation for different languages. So you could uh, add the specifics here, uh, selecting a different language and name for your uh, string consent. And if you need some sort of a specific policies, like security policies, then you have to add them in this tab. We're not going to touch much on preferences and Tyson, although you know that the tabs are here and all the changes that you make in any of these tabs are going to affect the XML that is going to be created at the end. That again, you can modify manually, but it's recommended not to do so unless you know exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I am going to open the index.html file and we're going to take a quick look on what we have here. And in this particular case, because we're talking about a web application, you can see that this is a standard HTML. In this particular case, we have an unordered list that should display all these list items uh, over here. So this one to 10. Now I'm going to open the app.js file. And as you can see, this is regular JavaScript. Uh, at some point, I'm going to create a few di different videos where we're going to check some of the libraries that allow you to use the specific features of your wearable device. But in general, you can see that the structure is quite similar to things that you have already done with HTML or any web page or not Node.js. Uh, application that you may have created before. Now, to be able to run this application, it would be great if we can use the emulator. To launch the emulator for the first time, you just go to Tools, Emulator Manager. It's going to launch a different application that has the different images for the devices and versions that you may want to use. And in this particular case, I'm going to use the wearable device Circle 4.0 and you launch the emulator. It's going to load the emulation of Tyson on the device. So that may take a couple of seconds, at least the first time. Now we know that it's running correctly. And it's going to show you the uh, default watch phase that you have here. When that is done, you can go back to Tyson Studio, right click on your project, and say run as a Tyson web application. In this particular case, I haven't saved uh, the changes that I did on my config file, so I'm going to say OK. Then it's going to start launching your application on the emulator. As we uh, expected, we have a, uh, an order list that now we can use and we can go through touching on the screen like any other user would or using the vessel. That is one of the greatest uh, attributes that you have with uh, Samsung Galaxy Watch. One of the in interesting things is that you can start modifying this template right away. 
and you're still not going to miss a lot of the functionality that already comes with uh, the template. So just to continue the tradition of creating a hello world, I'm going to modify the first item on our list and we're going to see how it is displayed. I'm going to go back to the index HTML. I'm going to change the string that we have here for a hello video. I'm going to save pressing Ctrl S or just going to file and save. Well, in this case, I already saved it. And then again, I'm going to run a Tyson web application. It should reload the application on the emulator. And there you go, we have the Hello Video. So using these templates, even though they just give you basic functionality, you can start adding your logic or the type of view that you want using the index HTML and the app.js. And you can even start including uh, JavaScript libraries on your JS folder to be able to obtain the functionality that you want. In upcoming videos, I'm going to cover samples and other aspects that would help you to modify these templates and help you to get on your way to create your own applications. In the meantime, just let me know in the comments if you like this video and what kind of other aspects of Tyson and Tyson Studio you would like me to cover in future videos. Thank you.